Hi, welcome to my new video. Are you a complete beginner on Linux? You have installed Soren OS, Linux Mint or some beginner Linux distro and you're an absolute noob and you want to play video games on them. And the setup is per se really easy, it's just some mouse clicks you need to do in order for it to work, but you just need to know where to click. So this video is a really basic, really simple level instruction video of how to play video games on Linux. In this video I will cover Steam, Heroic Launcher, Lutris and yeah. I will talk about the role Proton is playing on the Linux system, so I will keep things really, really simple. Yeah, let's go. You have switched to a Linux and you know you were inspired by some YouTube tutorials, videos, etc. made be in regards of SteamOS, Steam Deck for example, made be for some other videos and you have seen some comparisons for example that show, have shown you know, FPS on games on Windows, on Linux, how Linux behaves in regards of video games, for example in regards to stability, fluidity and performance. And then you thought, yeah, I want to use and switch to Linux. And let's just say you have installed Linux Mint, for example. And you may even have installed, you know, from the App Store, you know, maybe Software Center, Discover, depending on a desktop interface. That's a different topic now. And you have installed Steam, for example. And then you go in there and they see, you know, you cannot download the games because the games are only available on Windows. But how the hell are you able to use them? I will show you in this video. But before I continue, there's a topic I need to cover and that is DirectX, Vulkan and Proton. Because while Windows video games now are optimized to run with DirectX 11, DirectX 12, you know, with ray tracing is a different topic now. The thing is, on Linux, you utilize Vulkan. Vulkan does the same thing, it just is more stable than yeah, whatever Microsoft Windows is going on. Again, it's a different topic. So here you have the problem that the video games you're trying to install and download are developed for an environment in which they are no longer are. What I meant to say is they are made for Windows, but you are using Linux. So good, so obvious. Now, how the hell, first of all, do you work with them? How the hell are you interacting with them? Because what you need to do is to make them Vulkan compatible. Because Vulkan is one language of, you know, in video games interacting with CPU, GPU, RAM, again, different topic now, and DirectX 11, 12 also are a different language. So here you are. You know, you are communicating with a language, the video games communicating with a different language and they both cannot do anything with the other. What you have is the game crashes immediately, even if it boots up at all. This is bad. So how do you solve the issue? You work with Proton. Proton is a wine derivative. What is wine? Wine is, you know, an environment. It's important to know wine is not an emulator. That's what Wine itself stands for, but it just has a feature which translates Windows calls into a Linux language immediately. So it's not a separate room, let's just say, I'm oversimplifying here, which emulates a Windows envi environment and then sends the results out to Linux. No, it translates the calls into a Linux language as soon as possible. So all the processing does not happen in a faked Windows environment, but directly on Linux. And you do this via Proton, a Wine derivative, specifically made for video games, developed by Valve. 
I mean, there's also GE Proton, you know, Chloe's Acral Proton, this is a different topic now. Now we are now I'm getting lost in the details here. What do we know? On Linux, we work with Vulkan. Windows video games work with DirectX. 11, 12, whatever. You utilize Proton to translate DirectX 11, 12 into a Vulkan language. So you can play with them on the Linux system. That's this here. This here is the base fundamental of the rest of the video. Let's go to Steam. To call Steam essential and important for the Linux environment of its po growing popularity, etc., especially in regards of Steam Deck, would be an understatement. As much as people like to open source and you know everything free, they cannot deny corporate backing really does help. Of course, Valve have their own interest in the growth of Linux to have a system to sell their video games on. And then you go to Steam. Now here I am on a fresh install of Fedora. Now it does not really matter which distro you install, I mean if it's Debian or Ubuntu or Fedora, because you do not even need to work with the terminal. What you can do is just open the Discover Software Center. So either it's you know it's called software where center I do not have it because I have discover discover is just the KDE equivalent of that software so what I'm going to do is open discover and here you know from which I can install all the other plugins tools etc I might need and just type in steam And voila, and we're just gonna download it. After the installation, you can just open it and execute it. Now, first install updates. Yeah, it's not it's not something new. Then just log in, obviously. Now here you are on the starting screen, and you can go to library, etc. Go install some games, you know, Alan Wake for example. And now you will stumble across an issue. And that is that the install button here is disabled because it's only available for Windows. Now you might ask yourself, why is everyone talking that you can play Windows games on Linux when it's blocked in my case? Simple. There are some additional settings we need to configure now. Now you go to Steam and settings and then you go here to notifications we don't need that here you can change the language german for example for this tutorial i will leave it at that now here you go to library uh, no we don't need that then yeah allow downloads during gameplay i would recommend to have this enabled and shader pre-caching allow background processing of vulcan shaders i would enable this Storage, you can external drives, for example, SSDs, HDDs, etc. is not really the topic of this video now. And go down to compatibility. Enable Steam Play for all other titles. Enable this one. And then restart. Because here on my host system, I've already configured all the different steps. But if you have now, you know, now you've switched it, now you can install it. And if you would now download it and now play it, you would also stumble across some issues because again, you might have a DirectX, you know, cannot be read, blah, 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 error. And what you need to do is go to the certain game, right click, properties, compatibility, and uh, choose a Proton version. Proton Experimental is usually the best one. If you uh, should have some struggles, you can choose an earlier version. And that's the entire magic of yeah, Steam on Linux. Now we have set Steam up, now it works well, you have controller support, etc. Now what if you want to play GOG or Epic games? How do you do this? You work with Heroic Launcher. And the details vary, but the basic setup is the same.
Then if you want to play Epic and GOG games, what you need is to install Heroic Launcher. Heroic Games Launcher, open source, Epic Game, GOG and Amazon Prime Games Launcher, blah, blah, we need that. And then you can just open it, Heroic Games Launcher. Here in the Wine Manager install GE versions, GE Proton versions for you know, all the Windows games, obviously. Then you can even go to the shop, I'm not even Prime Gaming for example, and buy some games, etc. And then under Library you can download them. Now one thing always to check out is when you install a video game, is for example Vampire the Masquerade's Bloodline, the GOG version. Go on the settings section here, go to the wine page and make sure a wine version is installed and then enabled here. Because when we go to wine manager, here you can install different GE Proton or wine GE versions, whichever you prefer. Just that you make sure that they are actually enabled because sometimes it can happen that you install a game and there is red marked, it's not available here. Sometimes you need to click something else and then the other one again, it's a bit buggy. Sometimes just make sure it, that works correctly. Then you have Lutris. Lutris is, it does its own thing basically. You can from the internet install certain pre-configured setups. You may need for example a license, an installation file in addition to that. But other than this, they are configured for you. So they are more complex setups made for you. You can just download them, run through the process and everything is done for you. Then you also have Lutris. Lutris is, you know, many different game settings simplified. I mean, what you can do, for example, for example, in a browser, I could you know, Elder Scrolls 2, Daggerfall, the Lutris version. And Daggerfall Unity version, for example, I install it. Open link. And now on the Lutris, program I can now install it you know whichever settings I want to have applied and you know here you need to in select the installer files and when you do that for example you can go on we have a, a preset installation made for you and this goes for you know for clip studio paint for example So it does not even need to be a game, but yeah. Another alternative, you do have to work with Windows games and that is to work with bottles. Even though I need to say this, I have never ever used bottles for video games. The only time I've ever used bottles was to install audio VST plugins from a music setup, an entirely different topic. But again, you can utilize bottles, but even though I would say bottles is really a bloody last resort. If nothing else should work, then you can use bottles. Now that the bottle creation was successful, we can just enter it. And before we do anything, we go to settings, expand it, settings here and here we go to screen scaling dpi are you working on a 1080p monitor then you can leave it at that i'm working on a 4k monitor that's why i'm gonna change it to 192 then i can just save it and there are many different settings you can modify you know fidelity super resolution latency flex etc feral mode so what I want to say is covering bottles 
in all its details would be deserving of its own playlist. <laughs> now, what I'm just going to do is jump over some details here. Because now we can go dependencies. And you can .NET dependencies, VS3 distributables, you can download all of them here. So if you want to install a game, it doesn't have to need to be a game, a software, a Windows software, and its dependencies, here you can install them. And you can either you know, add shortcuts or install programs. There are some presets made for you, some few, but here you can just add shortcut and search for an .ex file, add it, and in there you can execute it. But what I can really say is, it's not my personal recommendation. There are some expanded Wine tools, and that would be configuration, for example. You just need some time to open. You can modify it in there if you would want to, but that's a different topic now. What I can say is, bottles, the only time I've ever used bottles was to install audio plugins for music production. I've made a different playlist in which I've talked about that, but for video games, I've never really ever used bottles. So with Lutris, GOG, Epic Games, running through Heroic Launcher, or just straight up Steam games, they all have their wine version, meaning Proton version, being a wine derivative, and I've never have a, had any issues regarding that. But yeah, these are the options and the opportunities you do have, and again, bottles, you can modify it extremely well, but yeah, that's basically just a showcase, a rough introduction, if you are a complete beginner and completely inexperienced in any sh way, shape or form. So, so good, so fine. We know how to install Steam games, heroic games, ah, heroic games, I mean Epic, GOG games, for example. So what else is there to say about gaming on Linux? First of all, I've never had probably any performance issues. I mean, I had some issues because of my Nvidia GPU, especially with the earlier versions, you now 550, etc. Nowadays, the problem is not as big anymore. So lots of complications. People with AMD GPUs would not even have ever had at all. But of course, what the biggest problems on gaming on Linux is developers refusing, first of all, to make it Linux compatible by a Proton, for example, throw in, you know, kernel, enter cheat. The only games not working on Linux are those not made to work on Linux. That I can say. I hope this video was kinda helpful, interesting, maybe a starting point for your gaming journey on Linux. Yeah. Keep working, because there's still much to Zoru and Gorit Berserk.